here we go. Hello, good evening and welcome to uh, the Chronicles of Captain Pontos, which is our live play homebrew campaign, which is now in its one, two, three, fourth season. Uh, the previous season you can watch on YouTube. Um, this is episode number six. Uh, mm -hmm. Very, very sadly, um, uh, due to health porpoises, um, we've got to watch out for the health of those porpoises. Um, uh, Nate is not going to be with us for a little while. Hopefully we will be able to welcome him back in the new year. Um, but in the meantime, we are a man down. Um, but we do still have also, um, also no Michael today, apparently. Haven't heard from him. Hopefully he's, uh, he's, uh, in, in good health as well. But for now, we just have, uh, Kevin, Ryan and Chris, um, if anybody would uh, like to volunteer to give us a recap on the previous session, then uh, please uh, speak now. Failing that, I will hand you over to um, our resident note taker, Kev. Okay, if uh, either of you want to um, volunteer or shall I just. Um... No, thank you. All right, then. For it. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, basically, the last session, which was also session 69 for the overall campaign, this one's 70. 69, uh, dude. <laughs> nice. Um, we were bodyguarding a bunch of fishing vessels when um, a orc pirate ship attacked. So we had to carefully navigate the seas. I was trying to torch the ship as much as possible beforehand. Then there was a load of balding, and then um, I magically restrained them all to let our fighters and, and rogue go absolutely medieval on them, going, ah, this is what auto crit looks like. And we were able to quite quickly at the end dispatch the remaining pirates. Um, and that was pretty much the session. That was pretty much it, wasn't it? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Um... What we can see is, well, I mean, the the sounds of battle have just died away. Um, you have a dead pirate orc crew on the deck of your ship. You have a uh, a pirate uh, a port a, a port an orc pirate galleon um, slightly to the southwest of your vessel. We also have uh, a group of. Um, arrow tied fishing boats who have been using their special lanterns, which uh, I'm just going to quickly blow up there. These are uh, special magic lanterns, which um, not magic lanterns, but they are special lanterns that are magic, um, he says, quickly backpedaling there, um, which attract the dire angler fish, which is. Uh, which swarm in these waters on are incredibly dangerous and like eating ship's cannons. Um, I will hand it right back to you. We'll decide by general consensus what Boren and Deep do at the moment. Um, but yeah, ask. far away. Pontos, can we tow that other ship back to harbour? We can indeed. I think we should send Boren to, uh, <laughs> to go lead it up. I think you're right. I think send Boren and Deep across. They can uh, take care of that ship and we'll tool back in and see what we can get for it. Well, um, if we need if we need a skeleton crew, maybe some of the fishing vessels might be able to supply an odd man or two as well. Yeah, okay. there's about there's about seven of them, so you know you might be able to get enough bodies. I don't know, just to turn the wheel or something. Um, but yeah, Deep. And Borin dutifully climb aboard the uh, the ship. One of them gets in the crow's nest, which doesn't line up with the square at the moment, and the other one gets behind the wheel. At least we then have something to show the mayor when we come back that we fulfilled our duty in, in the in the job that was given to us. Well, I've got an idea about that as well. Shall we dump all the bodies over the side, apart from the captain? We can behead him, and we can stick his head on a pike and put it on the ship and sail it in. Okay. 
so you you chuck the dead orcs into the into the sea they are quickly uh chewed upon by uh by hunter sharks which also frequent these waters you see a few fins appear um there were some slightly further out already because they got a sniff of blood in the water um possibly from the angler fish first because they were probably the first casualties um but yes these fishing boats they have um angler fish tied to their masts that's what they do they shoot them with harpoons and then haul them up on um pulleys and let them swing from the mast as they carry them into the uh, into the port these guys have finished their fishing so you can uh, I'm not going to say anything I've just realized something that you've done uh, well um, one one thing I, one thing I, I, I did say at the end of the last session I was going to uh, use sort of a combination of precipitation and control fire just to put out any of the odd flames on any of the rigging, especially that was on the orc ship, just so it's not, um, not at risk fire. of... Yeah. Or, okay. or it ca it's spreading over to us as well. That's fine. Um, mm. I've, I've just realised that you've, you've uh, um, tossed all the orcs into the sea, including the contents of their pockets. So... Meh. <laughs> too late now. Um, so not not too much in the way of loot, but you do have a uh, a, a pirate ship. Um, Carrick, do you think on the journey it might be worth checking the captain's quarters on the other vessel? There might be some documents or paperwork, um, intel, yeah, sort of where their ships might be patrolling or anything like that. A very good idea. I'm going to go and jump over to the other ship and go and search, I guess. Wait, you got The ship's running away from you. <laughs> doesn't want to get searched. <laughs> so you get on board the pirate ship. You start to have a, look, uh, a bit of a look around. Uh, the captain's cabin is not very tidily kept. There is um, a... A wooden desk which has some kind of map on it <coughs> it is uh, quite rough and ready it's not as nice as the map that you've got of this area from um, uh, from the from the mayor of arrow tide um, but it does obviously show um, it does obviously show the same place I may even mock one up for you at some point but I have not at this stage done that it has dwarven runes on it, but they are written in the orcish style. So, um, I think you've come across this before. Um, orcs, in fact, use um, dwarven runes to express their language. Um, but if a dwarf was to read it, it would be gibberish. So it's just they've copied the uh, copied the lettering. And used it in their own way. Mm -hmm. uh, as I understand I, it, I may have that completely wrong. Um, oh, even... actually, Pontos might be able to read Orkish runes. Now that I think about it, um, you think so? Hmm. Who knows? Do you have the? Do you oh. have? Do you have Orc language? I do. You do. That's good. Oh, and well, we have Comprehend language as well. Okay. So you notice particularly. Allow me to take you to the the world map uh wow that's really zoomed out why is it so zoomed out let's uh zoom in without rescaling the entire thing so you notice that there are more locations marked on the isle of thrall which is um this island here which you know less about uh, you know that there is a settlement on the southern tip called Grimrock. Um, there are depicted some ruins, but um, these are actually marked on the Orc map, but they are not marked on your map. So you may be able to um, 
decipher those and, and, and glean something of their meaning. But we're going to save that for another time. Um, so maybe in the next session you will find out what those are. Mm -hmm. But you take the orc map, you notice in the cabin there is actually a treasure chest which has some loot in it. This is obviously the loot that these uh, these orcs have managed to accrue. I am going to probably regret this. Uh, I reserve the right to veto anything that comes up in this that is stupid. Ooh, seems <laughs> but interesting. I'm, but I'm about to roll randomly roll a treasure hoard CR zero to four. So, so this is a the the lowest level treasure hoard you can get mm -hmm. uh, in the DMG. So I've made this into a rollable table. I'm about to push the button. It'll make a cha ching sound, and then I will hang my head in exasperation as it gives you six plus three dwarven throwing axes or something um <laughs> here we go so oh i need to put some spacing in there and then oh right okay um claiming uh, spell so you, uh, okay you most the climbing you, you most definitely find quite a few gems which mm. will have I might just put the values in. I'm going to change the tables. There is some copper, silver, and gold. There are some... some um, two potions of climbing, potion of healing, potion of greater... Uh, two potions of healing, two po a potion, a potion of greater healing, and a level one scroll unknown. Ah, right. I'm going to have to randomly determine that. I need a table for that. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? Um... A level one spell. I will come mm -hmm. back to you with that one. I'm going to make a note of that. Uh, determine a level one spell scroll. And remember to look back at this thing here. Actually, if I add it to my to-do list instead of my notes, then I'll be more likely to remember to do it. There we go. Very good. So, uh, so you find some treasure. Obviously, there are quite a lot of gems there. The gems are probably worth considerably more than the uh, than the gold is. Mm -hmm. I'll make a note of that later on. But yeah, it's in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. I won't delete the chat um, at least for now. So it should be there for plenty of uh, no plenty problems. of time to come. Um, what else does one find aboard a an orc pirate ship? So I'm going to say that you find, despite Roger. the fact the despite the fact that you threw, uh, despite the fact that you threw the the bodies of the orcs into the ocean, uh, without so much as checking their pockets, is, um, I am going to say that you discover, um, a small selection of orcish firearms. Um, these firearms you noticed them using. You probably had not come across any kind of any kind of gunpowder based weaponry other than ship's cannon in your whole lives. So this is actually a revelation to you all. Um, this possibly harks back to comments about um, about the alchemical genius of the orcs. Mm. Uh, you find let me I'm going to decide this randomly. Um, I do have some power cards for these. I have some handouts as well, I think. You find... Uh, you find one pistol. Dun, 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 which is obviously the size of a... One, two, three, four. I'm going to roll a d4 as well. Uh, you find... Uh, one more, and this is going to be a miscellaneous firearm. Um, it's yeah, I reckon we'll just randomly decide between those four. Three. That's interesting. Find a Glock. So what you find? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make these things visible to you now. So you find. A pistol, which uh, for all the world is a flintlock pistol. Mm. 
Um, I'm going to read this to you just to kill time. <laughs> uh, the smallest and most compact firearm, the pistol, is also one of the rarest firearms. Um, I didn't write this text. I cribbed this from a previous bit of uh, homebrew, which is quite good. Um, I have changed it around quite a bit, though. Uh, as most people not only prefer firearms with longer range... Um, ah, let me treat that as if it's a comma and not a full stop. Um, pistol, the smallest and most compact firearm, comma. The pistol is also one of the rarest firearms, as most people pref most people not only prefer firearms with longer range, but the pistol requires greater craftsmanship to craft. Despite its short range, a pistol is a formidable weapon, two spelling mistakes there, and is often used as a self-defence weapon. Due to this, pistol grips often have metal butts that allow them to be used as effective clubs. So you may use this pistol, if you have this pistol, as a club. Um, that will just be a D4 damage. D4 damage plus strength mod. Um, this will do 2D6 piercing damage, weighs 3 pounds and has a range of 50 slash 150. It also has the ammunition and loading uh, weapon attributes. So uh, we will have to track ammunition for it and you will have to load it. So that means that you can't fire it and then fire it again straight away. So it's a bit like a hand crossbow from that point of view. Um, I thought the firearms were a bit weedy really, so I bumped them up a bit considering this is a level 10 campaign. Uh, well, I think we're half, well, I'll, I'll say we're halfway through our level 20 campaign anyway. Um, the other thing you find is much, much longer. And you probably don't know what it's called, but pff, uh, essentially halfway between a musket and an arquebus, a caliver has a higher bore and heavier barrel than an arquebus, but it's otherwise identical in design. Basically, this is a, a flintlock rifle. Um, it is similar to a heavy crossbow, except that it has ammunition loading heavy and two-handed attributes. Um, so that is kind of a bit like a, a flintlock sniper rifle. Mm. <clears throat> but anyway, you find these two mysterious things. Uh, bear in mind that none of you is proficient in them at the moment. But I am prepared to allow you to train with them and gain proficiency. But for the moment, they probably seem quite mysterious. So you have one pistol and you have one caliber. There are other firearms for you to find out about. Um, they will come up in due course. Ooh. Oh. Does anybody fancy having a firearm at the moment? I think it's a crack. Char, so. Char, uh, Char always has firearms. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'll take one as well, then, I guess. But do so who's who's taking what? I don't mind. I'm happy to take one. But if there's only two, then the other two guys can have them. So the pis uh, the pistol is probably going to be quite a close quarter sort of weapon. Um, you're not going to be you're not going to be sniping anyone out of a crow's nest with it. Uh, at least you're probably not. Whereas the other one is probably for somebody who hangs back in battle and shoots from a distance. Um, not naming any um, names, but I, I, I did not make I did not create them with any characters particularly in mind. So this is I'm I not dro I'm not dropping hints. This is for you I, to decide. I can imagine Orin seeing that pistol and just shout, screaming mine and just running off with it. <laughs> and the person who picks up the caliber can can shoot him into the sea. <laughs> so, <laughs> um cool. let's see. I wonder I wonder what has happened to that boy, for he has not responded to his massage. Um, so, so I, I don't mind. I, I quite fancy the snipery gun, but I don't know how to use it. I'm not 100 percent what it is yet. So maybe we get back to sure we can decide. Yeah. Yeah. I'm impressed with the craftsmanship. I don't. Yeah. Sort of things like this. I've seen. Oh. Not these items, but the, the level of artistry and metalwork is normally associated with the dwarves that um, reside in the in the city of Brass. I didn't expect orcs to be able to 
produce things like this. This is um, interesting. Look at Pontos. Are you hiding something, my friend? Orcs um, more technologically advanced than we're expecting. We aren't so thick. Mm. I didn't. I didn't imply you uh, to be th uh, thick, uh, my, uh, my captain. It's more. I normally associate such craftsmanship with. Uh, dwarves and uh, and gnomes, you know, um, uh, orcs uh, make very good, very sturdy equipment, but not normally of things of this nature. But um, every yeah, it is a new discovery for me. We're full of surprises, my friend. Very good, my captain. Well, I like this. I like being called captain. <laughs> So, so, what are we going to do with our other ship? Shall we sell it when we get back? Uh, I think uh, if 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 the mayor allows us to keep it as 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 a treasure, then yes. But um, I we we have a fair amount of funds. Uh, I I gave everyone their share a little while back, so I think trying to um, build goodwill might be more valuable than gold at the moment in this set of islands. But um, again, that is down to what the mayor says and what our, our captain decides. So it's down to our captain rather than the mayor. We, it's bound to be found it. Yeah. What's very that, good, captain? Very good. Yeah, we'll just do it. Do it. Cool. Right, rather than move all these boats around, mm -hmm. um, the the arrow tide fishing boats um, pull up alongside, and uh, the captain, who uh, is somebody that you have met before, whose name I am struggling to recall, but it is written down here somewhere, uh, NPCs, humans. So this is Jackson Savant. Um, That's it. I've just found it myself. Uh, he is the captain of these, of this little uh, fishing, fishing uh, unit. He says, "Oi there! You made short work of those pirates. I'll be uh, sure to pass that on to uh, Northcliffe Spalding when the when the opportunity arises. I expect he'll be well. Let's be honest." He probably won't express how impressed he is, but hopefully he'll be impressed nonetheless. Um, shall we be getting back then? We've uh, filled our quota. Yeah. yeah. I think that makes sense. I think we, we've done our job. Let's uh, go back and bask in some glory. Very good. Lovers. So... Uh, it keeps on zooming out. Why is it so zoomed out? Maybe I can, maybe I can fix that. Let me try and fix that. We ain't gonna fix that. There we go. Set from current camera. Done. Excuse me. So you pull back into Arrowport Tide, um, just as, just as the sun is coming up. It took you a little while to sail out. To the fishing waters the battle itself was relatively short um, but searching the ship and sailing back again uh, ate into a little bit more time um, you've probably been out for somewhere between six and eight hours so you're probably a little bit tired uh, especially since you don't normally uh, necessarily kind of work overnight but you pull in and uh, the boats all find their berths um, and the harbour master is like Oh, bloody hell. What do you want me to do with that? you know of anyone who'd be interested in purchasing this off us? Oh, we don't know. Um, Maybe somebody wants to buy a load of firewood. Well, it's better uh, fire, at least minimum of firewood or uh, at, what, at best a new ship for Arrow Tide than it is to just sink it or give it back to those on Thrall. 
Oh, quite right. Right, okay then. Well, uh, I mean, you'll have to pay harbour fees until it's sold. Or we could just uh. ink it in the harbour. <laughs> oh, don't you do that. I'd be bloody <laughs> furious. <laughs> Somebody would have to pull it out and everything. How much would the harbour fares uh, be? Oh, damn it. You would ask, wouldn't you? You would have to ask. Because somebody will have to think what they actually are. Um, oh, so, oh no. let, let us let us take that out of the fee or, uh, on 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 time of sale, shall we? Right, that makes perfect sense. I'll just keep a track of it here, and then uh, and then we'll send a, send along the new owner as soon as they uh, uh, as soon as they are, can be identified. So for the DM to worry about later. Oh, a neat sidestep there. Very good. <laughs> um, okay, so you uh, you are back in Arrowtide, or you're back in the port of Arrowtide. Um, what do you want to do now you're back? Well, once uh, it becomes a little bit late, later in the morn, I'll report to the mayor and just see if we can get some payment for that work. But after that, um, Captain, uh, where do you want us to proceed? We've got a couple of leads we might look into, or um, we can look around. It's, it's up to you. Um, I think we should have a little look around. Can we get some rest and um, start looking around in the morning? Yeah, that's a good chance. Cool. Oh, I hope you didn't hear that funny little noise my throat made. Um, I heard something. <laughs> okay, that was... I didn't think it was your throat. Oh, well, the microphone's <laughs> not close <laughs> enough to anything else. Um, um, that makes it more impressive. Um, <laughs> so, uh, what's the... Uh, uh, you're going to have a little bit of a rest first? So, are you going to yeah. just yeah, kind of... Yeah find your bunks below decks or I can't remember whether you actually decided to you didn't stay in any inns or anything did you, you just visited a couple no, no, I think we, we crashed in, in the ship since we yeah. we got we got our berths here yeah cool so you uh, I mean you're fully welcome to take a long rest if you wish but obviously that will bring us up to like two o'clock in the afternoon or you can just have a little nap and have a short rest and then you know, kind of go into the town at breakfast time. It's up to you, really. Um, I, I I can make do a short rest, and if the others want to have a full rest, I can at least do the administrative bits while they're uh, recovering. Yeah, Borin was not particularly beaten up, so he doesn't need a long rest. Um, was anybody particularly badly hurt? Um, no. 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 Okay. Obviously, I need to try harder. God, there's firearms and nobody got badly shot. No, Deep did actually get beaten up quite a lot. Um, how about Kararuk? Kararuk's pretty good. He's all right. He's only taken one one good knock. And uh, oh yeah, I managed to beat up Pontos a bit as well, obviously. So yeah. so it wasn't a complete failure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, go 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 ahead and take your short rests if you would like to obviously you don't have to that's optional you can save your hit die um oh, that's it i'm i'm full up bang boom huzzah okay shall we take a short rest then go into town i'm going to go oh. to the final oh. priestess yeah yeah do yeah. it um go ahead take care uh Char has rolled his hit die, so take uh, roll any hit die that you wish to. You may only wish to roll one. Uh, obviously, not everyone will get their... Uh, only one of you will get spell slots back for a short rest, mm -hmm. but... Um, but yes, uh, don't worry about deep. I will do... I will do Borin. Um, not in the biblical sense. Um, right, here's a hit die for Borin. Mm. That was an 11. So that puts him 
at full hit points. Uh, short rest button, there we go. So Borin has all his hit points back. Um, oh, I, okay. Uh, um, I don't know if I should just tell you guys, guys this, but a few weeks ago, we got a new sofa. So we put the old sofa out in the front garden, waiting for it to get picked up from the tip. Um, bit in too that far, time, th No, thanks. But in that time, the uh, Google uh, <laughs> car came, has come along and it's got a picture of an old sofa in front of our garden. So yeah. the, our whole neighbourhood's sort of prices have just dropped by about five grand. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. I'm going to be popular with the neighbours. <laughs> Whoops. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, just to let you know, um, John, that's uh, D6 plus 4 I just rolled there. Is that your that wonders, was... uh, wonder fireballs? Uh, no, uh, that's the stuff of fire. So cool. I used a, a little bit of that overnight. So Groovy. Okay. So... Um, uh, are you are you all uh, are you all done for now, or are you still doing some bits? I'm good. I'm good. Ready? Okay. Um, you are awakened um, from your brief, uh, brief yet refreshing slumber, slumber um, by by a call. You you can hear somebody shouting out. Um, uh, Dipthan and Orn of Pentagon, uh, your Majesty, I, I have a, I have a message for you. Uh, Deep wakes up, um, picks a bit of sleep from his eyes, and uh, and uh, goes up on deck. He comes back with a uh, a scroll. Um, this this is a uh, kind of a parchment scroll rolled up. Um, obviously sent in some kind of scroll case, probably by flying beast. Um, and he says, ah, uh, friends, I must depart. Uh, I have to return to Pentagon. My, uh, um, my brother Dump Thaninor, um, has summoned me on a matter of the direst urgency. Um, he's, he's probably just spent the entire budget on on uh, on gambling and and carousing but i've got to go back and sort it anyway um so i will return hopefully uh hopefully by the new year he says um he immediately packs up his meager possessions and um goes to try and book passage back to pentagon be safe deep and we Hope to see you again soon. All in one, all in one piece. Yep. Oh, be safe, all of you, and uh, yeah, get well soon. Uh, get well soon, Nate. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll see you back again before too long. Hopefully, you'll be watching this. Um, then we didn't try and ship you with any of the uh, crew, unlike you doing <laughs> return. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Note that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Deep, deep did not shag any dolphins. Or, or, or dire anglerfish. Warren, uh, on the other hand, because he's not here, he uh, uh, that's that's fair game. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, we're trying to get Warren married off. Be <laughs> <laughs> some nice uh, Goliath uh, female in the dock. We can we can meet him up with. <laughs> oh, the logistics of that. <laughs> Still, you know what they say: everyone's the same height lying down. So, um, it's crazy, isn't it? Right, uh, carry on. Uh, what's next, guys? Who wants well, to go first? Yeah, well, uh, first off, uh, uh, Captain, um, we 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 got a few little bits in town to do, but once that is sorted, we have either this strange creature to the south of the island that have lured some of the sailors away. Um, a few people have asked about trying to get that resolved. Or there is that uh, 
sailor who managed to escape that orc captain, which might be able to find some information from, um, might might give some information about what they're up to and maybe clues about your leg. Which do you think is the best route to go? I think finding out more about the leg. Yeah, very good, very good. We'll, uh, we'll just sort these bits out in town first and we'll uh, set off inland then. Good to me, I'm not. Okay, uh, so you go in. You go into the town, Char. Um, are you are you going to go on your own to see the the mayor, or are you all going to go together? Um, I, I I might as well go on my on my own because the mayor did make it very clear that I was going to be the representative representatives for the uh, group when when I met when I met him last time. Yep, for he yeah. despises middlemen. Um, <laughs> Okay, so you uh, appear at uh, the mayoral offices. Just just before I arrive there, I'll use a bit of prestidigitation to tidy myself up and make myself uh, smell a little bit more um, nicer, uh, and also use my uh, armor to just g uh, give the illusion of a more um, just more ca uh, smart but casual wear, sort of so yeah, sort of loose fitting. Um, attire for myself uh but a, a lot more presentable rather than just walking in there um in armor very good okay so you are you are shown through to uh uh north cliff spaulding's office um he says ah hello char yes uh mayor spaulding it's good to see you once again yes you you don't look like you just spent all night on the deck of a boat uh, i trust me um i have uh, but a person like uh, yourself it is always worth putting a bit of effort rather than coming in uh, looking like i have just been kill hauled um yeah i understand that you appreciate professionalism indeed well um jackson's already been in he said the uh uh, he said your your escort was uh, more than adequate, and that you put paid to a a, a, a dwarf, uh, an orcish pirate galleon, um, with in short order. So, um, you have done as I asked, and you have therefore earned your reward. Um, yes. uh, I I think he agreed to pay you. It was either a hundred or a hundred and fifty gold pieces. Which it's a hundred and fifty per trip. I've got it down on my yeah, notes yeah. here. Um, doubtless that seems like pretty poor pay, but we've got to start somewhere. Uh, here is your reward. He gives you a purse of 150 gold pieces uh, in gold. And uh, he says, uh, I will think of other jobs that I, I feel I can trust you with uh, in due course. In the meantime, if you wish to guard fishing ships for coin, you may do so at any time. Um, that is our, not a problem. Our, our fishing fleet operates... Um, almost every day of the year. The only time they don't go out is, uh, um, well, is, uh, is, is public holidays. You know, we, we, uh, the, uh, the dire angler fish are, are so, uh, are so prevalent in these waters that, uh, it, it, it does to, uh, fish for them, uh, day after day. Uh, uh, that is fine. Uh, hopefully you heard, um, uh, how, as you said, how efficiently we dealt with that galleon. Um, uh, once I get close, uh, our, we have some very capable uh, fighters amongst our group, our captain, and a very angry dwarf. Um, they they almost seem to revel in in the, that close quarter fighting. So, if you have other jobs you think we are suitable for, uh, please do not hesitate to contact for the uh, for the for the flaming dirks. Excellent. I shall send word. Good day. Good day to you, sir. So he returns to his uh, his papers um, and uh, leaves you to, to move off. Take the captain's head with you and drop it on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what it was there for. So, oh, well, oh, I, think... Uh, man, I think if I did that, Mayor Sporting would uh, that would almost go against us. Uh, he's <laughs> heard word of our 
capabilities, if I put that on his desk, he would probably um, call the guard. Yeah, he may have been a bit more impressed. I don't know. <laughs> cool. All right, so I'm going to city Pontos. Well, uh, Charles off smoothing and smooching and being all professional. Shall we go and speak to uh, a priestess? It may be interesting. Sounds good to me. Okay. Well, uh, you obviously mean none other than the Charlton priestess who is known as, if I look in the right folder, I want the NPC folder, um, Mardella Celeste Dupre, who is uh, um, our game world's equivalent of a voodoo priestess, sometimes called a voodoo, a voodoo yen. Um, but yes, um, you find her where you found her before. Um, she is... In the town. Say hi, priestess. Do you remember me? Have you sp have you spoken or communed with your uh, god yet? I do remember you. I'm trying to remember what kind of accent she had. Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna try and do that and try and do it in a not racist way. Um, oh dear. <laughs> yeah, let's pick something else. <laughs> May, well, her, her name is Dupre, so maybe she has a slightly French accent. Um, I think that's probably where that kind of Caribbean accent comes from, isn't it? It's a slight yeah. fusion of accents. But anyway, she says, ah, yes, I recognize you. Um, welcome back, uh, Shadow Man. What, what can, what can Mardella do for you today? You, you wish to speak to the god? That, that is correct. Have Has your god made any um, contact with you? Yes, I have communed with the great god Upteo. I think that he might speak to you. Oh, he might. I put on one pass and just told you, and you people. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay, and how, how do I speak to your god? What? You must say his name correctly for a start. Um, his name is Obteo. Obteo. That is right. If you say his name wrong, he will be very displeased with you. Okay. Obteo. That is the one. He, we are, we are far from his uh, places of power, but um, his most faithful followers can still hear his voice. Um, I will attempt to play, prepare you with a small ritual. Um, you see this chicken here? <laughs> yes, I see the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Except actually in this picture, I'm not sure if it's a chicken. Oh no, it is a chicken. It's just, yeah. it's quite a, quite a hardcore looking chicken. She says, ah, I will, uh, I will sacrifice this chicken and I will, um, you must you must remove your upper clothing and I will um, anoint you with this blood. Then you will cast the bones and draw the veve in the sand. And then perhaps Umteo will speak to you. So there's, at no point are you stabbing something into my heart? No. Okay. That Not sounds... unless you annoy me. <laughs> that sounds much better. Let, let's do that. Then. Let's start the ritual. Okay. So, um, she, uh, she shows you how to draw a pattern, um, in the sandy soil with a stick. Um, it is, uh, a cross with circles going around it and there are a few squiggles, um, which are obviously e esoterica. It's not just, she's not just scribbling in the sand. She shows you how to draw it and then she wipes it out with her hand and she draws it again and says, look, I will show you again. You must draw this symbol here and she shows it to you a couple of times and then she says right okay remove your shirt and uh, she cuts the throat of the chicken and gathers its blood in a bowl and then she adds a little bit of uh, 
some kind of powder to it and, and makes a kind of makes it into a kind of paint and then she starts to paint uh, symbols on your body and she says right kneel here and draw the symbol of Obteo and then and then you must say his name you must say Father Obteo um, uh, please speak to me I will kneel down I'll draw the symbol and I'll put my hands in the ear and say Father Obteo please speak to me <laughs> okay <laughs> so um I'm not going to test your artistic skills because that would kind of defeat the uh, defeat the object, wouldn't it? I'm going to push a button though. Ooh. Um, so. Dun 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 dun. Ooh. Sorry, that was just me drawing for that. <laughs> I am Uktail. Father of dinosaurs, creator of Chult, founder of the sacred city of Mesro, and the deceiver of foolish men. Who seeks an audience with Ukteo? Ariruk Thesodown seek an audience so mighty with Theo. Um, I am between life and death. And I have been pointed in your direction, or I come seeking for advice. I have been chosen as a champion for another god, which I have not accepted yet. Um, but I thought I'd seek out some more wisdom. Uh, well, I am a god of the balance. I do not care for law or chaos, only the balance of neutrality. You, or your, rather your, your would-be patron, wishes you to skew the balance. Move away from the the commonplace realms of mortality into a different place. This may not be good for you. I got a feeling it is not good for me, but what choice do I have? I I can't stay between life and death. No. I will give you another option. My cleric, my priestess Martella, she can brew a potion for you. This potion will strip from you the corrupting power of undeath and return you to life. You will be mortal again. Subject to the, rule, the commonplace rules of mortality, you will grow old and eventually die. Or you have the other option. What, what will this cost me? Immortality. That's a heavy price to pay. Well, it's something I must think about. Indeed, the choice is yours to make. I am not good or evil. I strive only for the balance. And you are out of balance. Your soul leans heavily towards the darkness. But I can reverse this, but you will one day die. When I do die, will that be down to you, or will it be down to natural causes? Most likely natural causes. I place no ownership upon your soul. I will not be taking you into my realm. Oh. 
that sounds a very good deal. <laughs> there there, there must avoid, be. If you want to avoid the abyss or the nine hells, then the work you do to, to cleanse your soul, well, that is down to you. Thank you, Almighty. Hope it you. Um, I, I will speak to my colleagues and make that decision, but I will ask your priestess to make the potion. Very well. Thank you. Goodbye, Karuk. I can bow my head and say, thank you, Mighty One. We will not meet again, but it was interesting. Never, never see never. <laughs> no. Oh, man. So you feel you feel the presence of the god pass, and you are left um, standing next to uh, Mordella, the priestess. Um, she says, "Ah, this was a strong visitation. He uh, he spoke to you most directly. Quite often." He speaks only in strange visual metaphors. Sometimes people see visions of dinosaurs, axe beaks running around, and things like that. Um, but yes, he uh, clearly was interested in, in your soul's plight. It was very disconcerting. God How? offering me a way out without any catches. Well, and another god offering me a, a completely different offering. It's, uh, interesting. You must consider when something is offered to you, what is the price? If someone it's... offers you power, what do they want in return? Upteo is only interested in the balance. When he sees things that are out of balance, he tries to return them to balance. Oh, this is not always so. the healthiest thing. But it is the best for the world at large. I will prepare you the potion. Um, come back later. Thank you. Oh, well. Then I, I will walk out and say, Come on, Pontos. Hope you found that interesting. But got to tell you a few things, my friend. I'll just blindly follow. Or blindly listen. <laughs> no, see to him. That's the second god I've spoken to. The first god was a bit more um, demanding. He was my soul for eternal life, and I'd be his champion. The first god, or the second god, Obdeo, wants to just make me back to normal with no catches. Hmm. Uh, yeah, there's no catches. Yeah, but there's also been able to have a be undead and be an undead champion. Maybe uh, an interest in me for everyone in the party, a different route for everyone to take. Hmm. I think we need to discuss this with Chaw. Boren's not here, so we can make him undead anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes, you you hear the uh, the evil chuckle of um, uh, of Orcus in the back of your mind. He says, "Yes, <laughs> hold on, hold on. I I can even do the voice change for that. No, notice, I've I've got a voice mod, and I've used two different voices. Ah, cool. Out of yeah, the that many one, available that, voices. Yeah, that one seemed to have a, like a weird kind of slivery uh, backing sound like, every time you spoke." Yeah, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Um, mm. But I, I, I thought it was, yeah, the most appropriate that one. But it's very godly. It's pretty cool. But then the other one was kind of the demon voice, which is similar. That one was this one yeah, that's... with the rattly noise in the background. Anyway, Walker says, <laughs> "Yes, I would like the spider wanted one. We will make him into." Undead dwarf champion, perhaps a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Zombie boring. <laughs> Sorry, boring. 
Mm. Cool. Well, I uh, I hope nothing horrible's happened to him. I'm sure it hasn't. I'm sure he's fine. But um, he may just have forgotten that it was Thursday. Stranger things have happened. Um, but yes, do carry on. Let me know what you would like to do. We're going to catch up with Char then. Yeah, cool. let's do that. Good evening, Char. Well, good afternoon. Um, well, we've got, we've got the money from the um, from Mayor Spalding. Not a lot, but at least it, it, we're getting our, our name out there. And why do you have a penis drawn on the side of your face in what looks like blood? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, that's an interesting one. You never believe what's going to happen. Pontus, was this some sort of joke you did when he was asleep or something? Why did you... Oh, yes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, I I've spoken to another god, as you do, um, Orbis, and I, I can have another potion which will uh, make me me again. Without having to worry about being undead or as I am. Right. You've spoken directly to two gods. You've on, seemed to be on first name terms with the grand grand lord of of all of the plane of fire. Um and you got like um, Deep, who is meant to be the most devout of all of us, and yet he is, yeah, he barely gets any guidance from his, from his patron. What yeah. is it about you that seems to have the gods so interested in you? I'm just going to pat Char on the back and say, Don't overthink it, my friend. You'll end up going crazy. But I, my, my, my parents. We're a little bit different, and we'll leave it at that. Obviously, but um, so this this other option you've got, what what is it again? I can. Uh, how can I put it? I, I've got two potions. Potions now. Okay. The one from Orcus, which will turn me into an undead champion mm -hmm. with mighty powers. And one from Orbis, which will make me just plain old elven carry rook. No catches. So you, you, see, you say plain old elven carry rook. I mean, that has done you for many years uh, up until this point. So yeah, you've done remarkable things. As you were, so yeah, do not put yourself down like that. Mm. I'm just thinking. So I've got, I'm going to have two potions. What if I drink both at the same time? You are. Uh, I mean, I can only speculate what these things truly are. I mean, while they may just look like. A, a potion or a vial of, of some fluid, I'm sure there is an unholy amount of divine energy uh, within them uh, that to combine them like that would be foolish, to say the least. See, British, some would say experimental is good. DM is writing furiously. <laughs> <laughs> experiments are good. Experiments are good, but this is dealing with... Yeah, I mean, an alchemist mixing a few chemicals together in a um, in his workshop, and the worst that might happen is a, um, a slight explosion or a foul smell. If you're trying to put two... Concoctions uh, created by uh, the uh, the gods themselves and put them inside you. I mean, they could tear you asunder. They could 
make you into some unholy abomination. They could, yeah, they they might do nothing. You know, they cancel out. It is a literal gamble on your very life and soul. Um, do you really think um, it is worth something as, to do something as frivolous as that? Well, I was thinking, it's not just me. We've got portion of year enough for probably all of us if we mixed it together. <sighs> we could all have a little taste. <laughs> Let's all have a little sip of this soul-destroying undead formula of doom. <laughs> might taste good. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> Yeah, first first one's free. Go on. Um, <laughs> I would definitely. The campaign would definitely <laughs> take a slightly different path if that happened. I can tell you now. <laughs> I would. I would voice a lot of <laughs> caution doing that, Carrick. Um <clears throat> But I mean, you are. You have one option here of. Going back to your yourself, the, the 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 wood elf that we all met, the wood elf that your sister knows and your friends back in your tribe, and you can continue to be who you are for the rest of your, quite frankly, very long elven life. Or, on the other hand, you could... Div- you know, pledge yourself to the other being. I be I'm careful not to say his name in such a public area. And you would be given untold powers and eternity, but you would always be at his bidding. Um, if you feel that his how you want to be, or if you want to go back to yourself and your own free choices in life, it is yours and yours alone to make that that decision, Kalruk. Indeed, but you, you forget my tribe was wiped out. Um, your, well, your sister is still around, and um, in, I've forgotten her name. Uh, um, uh, okay. um, Hawkland, yeah, okay. um, was um, <clears throat> it's, it's, they're both still around. Would they like to see you as you or you as this champion? Hmm. It's interesting. See, the, 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 there's more, you know, so I can become mortal, be myself, and live a life of adventure in the high seas. Um, I can become an undead champion and become all-powerful, which would be pretty sweet. I can stay as I am, or I can mix them and see what happens. I would say that last option is definitely the last option, really. (laughs) Well, there is another option. We mix portions and everyone tries it. You seem so lax and carefree with such powerful arcane concoctions. I I I definitely voice caution in that, but um Pontos, were uh, uh, were you about to say something? No, I'm pretty mute most of the time. It's going to be All right, sorry. I thought, I thought you said something there. Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm, I, thought I'm, I, had, I thought I had Pontos in. Yeah, mix it, mix it, mix it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's bad enough when someone brings a tray of um, Jaeger uh, around to the table. That you that you know that's going to be a bad mix, no matter what. What you're on about uh, trying to mix and down is something exponentially worse, or exponentially better. 
many people have said that when the Jaeger bombs arrive, but uh, they, they always regret that afterwards. Yeah, but it's good at the time. <laughs> you know, live in the here and now, not tomorrow. Um, but those are my options. Mm, it's, it's, it's incredible that you, for, like I said, for whatever reason, you seem to be of so much interest to so many divine beings. Um, you are the envy of many a priest and um, and cleric and paladin in, in, in this in this realm. I think maybe one night, once I'm drunk enough, I'll tell you about my parents a bit more. Mm. That's something I am interested in, but also strangely worried about as well because there there must there must be a, a tale there but that's that's for a future time um but um our captain here he needs to try be whole again so shall we try and find this survivor and see what we can find out We're a little bit early for the break, but um, if you guys don't mind, we'll do it now. Mm -hmm. um, I've oh, you've you've given me lots to think about. I made notes and everything. I wrote things down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, mixing two di the divine potions. What the fucking hell are you thinking about, you? <laughs> what? Well, yeah. that'd be awesome. I have an idea of what it'll do. Yeah. Do, you, do you want to become Demon Spawn? Because that's how you become Demon Spawn. I could be the king of the demons and you guys can be my minions and we can go on a killing spree and that that could be our oh, campaign. You, you turn into some demonic um, clown from Spawn. Yeah. yeah. We can turn you all into zombies and stuff and it'll be a great... No. Completely different. <laughs> Undead. Mm. Undead party. Horror campaign. Yeah. Oh um, God! X-rated, no. banned from YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, right. Cool. Uh, catch you guys in about ten minutes. So uh, no worries. A little after ten. Yep. And cool. I pushes the button, and then I hits the pause. Welcome back to uh, part two of the Chronicles of Captain Pontos. Uh, we were just having a little chat in the break about Ryan's brand new YouTube channel. Do you want to give us a little bit of a shameless plug, Ryan? Yeah, a little bit of the shameless self-advertisement here. But I've currently created a YouTube channel. It's pro predominantly focusing on gaming. There's going to be a few Let's Plays. And at the moment, I'm also playing Overwatch 2. The tag is GamertagDad. And I'm also going to be doing a little series about life as a new parent, the ups and downs, the lack of sleep, the joys, and uh, <laughs> the upsets. So, uh, yeah. There are coming. joys? <laughs> there are occasionally, my friend. When they smile at you, it's great. But when she's screaming at you at two in the morning and sneezing in your mouth, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not a highlight. My, my um, question is, is it better than having a dog? Look, mate, puppies are harder. Ah, never puppies, had a puppy. in my opinion, were harder than a baby. Um, uh, babies don't bite. Yeah. Also, <laughs> you don't you don't have to buy a baby either. You can just make one yourself, can't you? I guess, but then uh, the upkeep is not cheap. There is that. Yeah, swings and roundabouts. Mm. Anyway, well, thanks for that. Um, uh, I will. Um, if Ryan sends me a link, I will. I will add it in the description, uh, which Thank they sometimes much. call the doobly do. Am I allowed to say doobly do, or is that? too cringe for words um you said it now. well i've said it now i, I can't i can't <laughs> put that genie back in the bottle so um once more unto the breach dear friends and let's slip the uh, crimson dirks of war what's the plan chaps <clears throat> oh our captain wanted to try and see this um survivor who had gone as far inland as they possibly could get away from any uh, this human pirate who had um, 
who does, um, yeah, who uh, escaped this dwarf, uh, this orc, strange pirate, um, human pirate. Yeah, please, uh, please tell uh, me you wrote her name down. <laughs> yeah, Cheryl with the care, uh, Cheryl with the bear, Copland. Oh, thank I'll God. Get <laughs> I was looking through all my notes. I couldn't find it anywhere. Cheryl the Bear Copeland, right? Um, so you uh, presumably begin to head along the path inland. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, so oh. do you take some lunch with you, maybe? I don't know. You've got rations. You'll be fine. Um, so Borin opts to stay in Arrow Tide. Um I what's what's he doing? Um, drinking, drinking, yeah, drinking. Um, arm wrestling. Arm wrestling. Um, annoying spiders. Um, uh, there don't seem to be very many spiders on the Isle of Isik, which would explain um, why he doesn't appear to have uh, had any spider attacks lately. But how long can it last, dear viewer? <laughs> Um, so, uh, the the party, such as it is this week, heads uh, out into the gap between the two mountains. It appears uh, that perhaps two twinned volcanoes grew up out of the sea and uh, made their own little island out of um, uh, metamorphic rock. Is that the right? Is that the right name for it? Igneous rock. So. Um, these are possibly two ancient volcanoes that have formed an island about them. They appear no longer to be active, but they do form uh, twin mountains with a pass in between them. Um, you notice that the interior of the island is um, quite uh, quite grassy, quite, quite lush in fact, verdant even. Um, there are palm trees um, and tall grasses of various different kinds. There are some of the uh, some of the hardier grasses that tend to grow in hotter climes, which um, uh, uh, grow thicker underfoot, almost like a carpet. Um, you feel like you could probably walk barefoot um, and enjoy it under oh. under your little toes, but. After walking for some miles, a few hours, uh, you find yourselves um, somewhere near the middle of the island where you believe um, the pirate survivor to be. Um, let's have some perception checks. We've not—I don't think we've done any rolls yet, apart from apart from hit die, so and recharges. Very good. So, uh, Char casts his eyes about. Uh, I take to the skies a little bit, get a bit of an aerial view. Yep. Uh, your 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 burning gaze falls upon a a very tall palm tree. What you notice is that at the top of the palm tree, where uh, there is a little canopy under the leaves where the coconuts might grow. You might have missed this from the ground, but because you took to the air, you notice um, a humanoid figure clutching the the top of the palm tree just under the just under the leaves. They're sort of hiding there and uh, looking about with fast, twitchy, and paranoid movements. Um, uh, Looking down towards your earthbound companions. Hello there. Um, are you stuck? Ah! <laughs> you scare the shit out of them. <laughs> they immediately let go of the palm tree and tumble down to the ground. <clears throat> well done. Uh, they yeah. they land they land roughly at uh, Pontos's feet. And um, they lie there stunned for a few seconds. What you see... Um, Pontos! Is... Pontos, catch! <laughs> I'll tell you what, you can try and catch her if you like. Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, give us a... I, I'm going to say you can choose between athletics or dexterity. 
Oh, Sorry, yeah. uh, athletics or yeah, athletics or dexterity. Okay, cool. yeah. I mean, it's she does not hit the deck head first. You do kind of manage to get arms underneath. Um, a powerfully built, um, quite tall woman um, with surprisingly her suit arms and shoulders. Um, lands in your arms. Um, she has a wild expression. Her eyes um, are uh, almost bulging out of her head and she has uh, very long, thick, wild hair which is uh, in parts silver, white and black. Um, she um, She's probably in her 40s um, but she looks like she's probably been living out in the wilds for some time. Um, she has, um, you know, yellowed teeth. Some of them are black. Some of them are missing. Some of them are made of wood. It's um, it's a, a a typical piratical mouth. Um, but yes, she she screams in horror as she looks up at Pontos and says, "Ah, it's an orc! Ah, ah, curse you orcs!" And your flaming feet! Ah! Let me go! And she begins to uh, pound her, pound her hands on you to try and uh, get you to put her down. Uh, give us a dexterity save to hold on to her, if you wish to hold on to her. You can just let her go if you like. I'll give her a go. Fuck it. Okay. She falls onto the ground and says, "Ah! Ah!" And she starts to crawl away along the grass, but in a very uncertain and uh, and I don't know. I mean, she's she's clearly a little bit unhinged. Um, she's like, ah, orcs be everywhere. They'll be sailing up the sides of the mountains next. Oh, my gods, here. I hide away in the interior and they still come and find me. There's no escaping these fiends with their flaming feet. Arr, the vast. Or something like that. <laughs> um. Have you been drinking at all, John? Um, <laughs> yes. How about you? Ah, yes, 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 I have. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, well, I'm going to try and descend uh, down and just try and. Yeah. Um, now he he he's with us. He he's not part of the pirates that attacked you. We we we. We're, are you are you Cheryl? We, we're um, Cheryl Copeland. We're we're here to speak to you. Ah, the red man knows me name. What's going on here? Can I uh, try and do like a persuasion or something just to try and get through to her? You can certainly try. Mm -hmm. oh, that's about the best I can try and hope for is a chance. Hmm. Yeah, I, I would say that is fairly successful. What what do you do to, to calm her fears and... Try and break yeah, I, through her madness. Yeah, I, I sort of just get in front of her. I, I sit down on the ground, just cross-legged, and just try try to go down to sort of her level. Again. He, uh, that that's Pontos. He's with us. He's not. He's not. Um, he's from from um, um, Isik. He's not from Throw. He's um, he's friendly. He's we're here. To, we want to um, speak to you about the orcs. We want to try and. Uh, deal with them so no no one else gets attacked. Uh, we we just want to know what happened to you. Please, just, what? just give us give us some time. What's this you see, red man? Friendly orcs. <sighs> well, we could certainly do some help with dealing with those dealing with those piratical fiends. They got well, they got tricks. With... They got magic tricks. We dealt with a uh, galleon uh, just last night that was uh, going to attack oh, some of what? some of your some of the fishing vessels in from Arrowtide. Oh, you're one of the guardians, one of the guardians of the fishing fleet. Well, that's an honourable profession, Red Man. Um, so yes, you see that that grey orc fella over there. You see, he's a friend, is he? Yes, he, he's from he's from Arrowtide. Um, he's a, he's born and bred in Arrowtide. He's 
he's from from around here. He, he's been traveling for a while, but he's back here to to help. Um, we we heard that they the altar throw where they had some strange um, strange magics, but you survived. We wanted to know what you saw. What what happened? Ah. Ah. Do you do you have something to drink with you? Um, I'm sure between us we can probably. I'm not sure if we've got anything strong. Um, Pontos, do you have any uh, any alcohol on you? Uh, under my loincloth, I just pull out pull something out. It's Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> it is not my bottle. I can tell you that much. Um, I tell you what, you uh, you could have a hip flask or something on you, you know, even if it's, I don't know. I subscribe to the theory that every single item you own can't possibly just be recorded on your inventory. Mm. Um, you, you, you're bound to have little knickknacks, little personal effects, which are not likely to uh, um, come into... I don't know, battle and, and mechanics, but could come into role play, you see. Um, no problems, no problems. So I, I can I can imagine uh, Pontos pulling a little hip flask out from his loincloth, <laughs> which is uh, mildly horrific, but also quite amusing. Um, I'm really curious. Oh, what be that, you friendly orc man of the Oil of Isic? She, what was that? She, um, she's she's asking you what's in your hip flask, basically. Oh, I'm just going to pass it over, and uh, she can try that herself. Oh, okay then. She uh, she grabs hold of it and she uh, she unscrews the cap, and she gives it a little sniff. Ah, well, I don't know why I'm bothering to sniff it. To be fair. I lost my sense of smell when when I, when I accidentally shot a flare up my nose about ten years ago on the sea. Um, but <laughs> I'll give it a taste anyway. And she um, she tips back the hip flask and takes a, a big old chug. And then she swallows. What have you given her? Yeah, I'm just going to smile. It's the bottleneck in my loincloth. And I'm just gonna smile at her. I don't know if she's worked out what it is. But what is it? Is it's it... not alcohol. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> she's like, oh, that's a mighty strong flavour there. That that reminds me of the water that we were forced to drink when we were uh, marooned on a desert island for for thirty days. Uh, well, I, um, after after that, I I will just. Um, Use prestidigitation to uh, produce a small um, bottle of of uh, some 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 rum, and also give her one of um, my cigars or something, just to try and take the the taste away. Oh, yeah, I I prefer the taste of this one. It's a much cleaner taste, a bit less, uh, a bit less of the uh, the ammonia aftertaste. Ah. Uh, that reminds me. That's the taste of the sea. That is a nice uh, white death rum. Mm. I feel quite, quite a bit more like myself, half drunk and with a with a cigar in my mouth. That's that's a lot better than I was about ten minutes ago. <sighs> so, uh, uh, since we know. Yeah, you let us uh, introduce ourselves. Uh, our great orc friend here is uh, Pontos. Um, my other colleague here is uh, Karuk, and uh, my name is Char. Ah, well, hello there, boys. Well, you already know my name. Name's Cheryl Copeland, but they call me the Bear on account of my large and somewhat furry arms you see they're somewhat uncharacteristic of ladies what normally travel on the sea but do you reckon 
there might be some uh, uh, some some werewolf blood in the family veins, so it be. It keeps me warm on cold nights. Well, it did. Until we ran across some of the pirates at Thrall. And you want to be knowing about um, that particular battle that sent me howling mad away from the sea. Uh, and made me afeard to even see an orc within 30 feet of me. Well, I'll tell you all about it. You see, um, we was out there fishing for the terrifying and dangerous dire angler fish. You know all about them, don't you? They set their lures upon the surface of the sea. Their lights all a shining, all pretty like. He, <laughs> they, they are very, very handsome to to see. And and if you get too close, they eats your ship's cannons and bites the heads off your crew. But anyway, we were well aware of the danger of the dire anglerfish. "'Twas only the orcs that we weren't prepared for. "'Their orc captain, they pulled up. "'We were ready for battle. "'We were going to fight them on the decks, "'hand to hand and sword to sword. "'We were going to tear their tongues out with our teeth if we needed to. "'But one of them, their captain, he... Um, "'No worries there. No worries there, Pontos. "'You go what you need to do. Um... But yes, this uh, this one orc, he was at least half as tall again as any orc you ever saw. He must have been seven or eight feet tall. He wore a long red coat, possibly made of leather, and his foot looked like it didn't quite fit. He had, um, this strange contraption strapping one boot to his knee like he was wearing some kind of brace from a knee injury. And he saw his crew descend upon us. He stamped his foot on the deck. And we all caught fire and were thrown into the sea on the sound of thunder. Oh, it was terrifying to behold. Some of us crawled up the sides of the ships, even though we was a fire, a fire, and we tried to fight back. And then that's when he kicked one of us. Oh, and the explosion, like an explosion of fire, like you never saw, like a fireball on the f on the toe of his of his boot, launched us off into the sea. Um, and. I don't know, that's the last thing I remember. <laughs> but yes, we could have taken his crew, but that captain, with his terrifying magical foot. Hmm. He sounds formidable. Does he have a a, a, a name? Um, is there a a emblem on his on his flag? Any kind of identifier so we can look to avoid him if 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 we see him ah one of the last things i remember as i was floating away and losing consciousness holding on to a shattered beam of one of the lifeboats was a fluttering flag and there were scimitars crossed in an x above an orcish skull and on either side were a sickle and a spear an unusual orc device to be sure almost like it were made up on the spot by somebody who was in a fix but anyway that's what I saw was enough to send me mad but actually aren't all pirates a little bit mad You'd maybe i'll go back to the sea 
to spend so much time on the water like that, yes, I would say you're um, all a little bit crazy, but... Hmm. That's... I like your cigars, Red Man. Have you got any more? Uh, I can give you a couple. I'll, I'll give her sort of two or three more. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. She uh, she tucks them into her um, bodice. Mm -hmm. She says, Hmm. I'm of half a mind to stay here and behave like a crazy person, living off the land. And the other half of me thinks I might as well just enlist again. I I've got a question for you. I've got two questions for you. Oh, fire away, you pallid man, you. So my first question. Are you single? <laughs> what? Are you single or are you married? Oh, well, I was uh, married to the sea, but we underwent uh, a bit of a forceful separation. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I take your meaning, sir, and I be single. Do you like dwarves? <laughs> <laughs> Do I like dwarves? Well, I don't know. I like me a very hairy sort of man. You'd have to have an exceptional beard. Oh, this beard is beyond reason. It is the most magnificent beard you'll ever have seen. Keep talking. I'll hear more. <laughs> it's a full beard full of rings and copper and wealth. Oh, And anger and hate. <laughs> he sounds like a handsome fellow. Might be a good groom for a pirate queen such as myself. I mm. think it's a perfect match. Well, maybe. <laughs> Perhaps you could introduce me. Put in a good word, you know. He will tell, play. Tell him I've got I... some of my own teeth still. They're not all <laughs> made of wood. <laughs> there is two other things. He will play hard to get. And uh, spiders are attracted to him for some strange reason. Spiders? Yes. Well, you don't get many spiders aboard a ship, do you know? Perhaps I can entice him away upon my ship. Excellent. Then I suggest you, you, you come with us. You wouldn't happen to know where I can get a ship, would you? Wow. Well. I feel the call of the sea upon me. We do happen to have, and this would be, I think, very apropos, actually. We, as we uh, captured a um, orc galleon um, in our last venture uh, guarding the ship, uh, the um, fishing vessels. And I think that is available for a, uh, a captain that is eager to set sail once more. Ah, you know what they say. When you've been thrown by the horse, and when I say thrown by the horse, I mean tossed into the sea from a burning ship destroyed by pirates. Um, when you're thrown by the horse, you must get back in the sea and uh, and and ride. Mm. And what better? Uh, yeah, the, the poetic vision of you uh, back in the sea and on a cap on a captured orc vessel ah uh, with my best boy by my side with with rings and ribbons in his beard oh it sounds like a vision does it not if he says no you could always possibly press gang him yes oh you're putting ideas in my head the romance of the sea oh i can smell it now right okay then ah uh, um, where can I find this ship of yours, and how much do you want for it? Well, um, I may have to commit some acts of petty larceny to raise the funds, but uh, you won't mind that now, will you? I've got no problem with that. <laughs> long you're you a, you're a man after my own heart, <laughs> Char. Uh, absent, do you have any issues with? How Cheryl acquires the the gold? None at all. Excellent. Ah. 
Right then, well, I'll be, I'll be heading off to the, uh, to the port then. I'll, uh, I'll go and steal myself some gold and, uh, and, uh, leave it with that there, um, uh, that there deckhand, not deckhand, the guy who, the port dude. I've completely Arbor forgotten master. how to say it. The harbour master, that's it. <laughs> I've completely lost the ability to speak English. I, I was channeling an insane uh, an insane pirate. And uh, it was difficult to come back from that, bizarrely. <laughs> I think you're cha channeling a lot of cider as well, possibly. Uh... <laughs> oh, not that much. Not that no. much. I'm, I'm halfway through with two litre bottle of cider, which is about three and a half pints, which isn't that much. Um, so... But, um, I was enjoying myself there, lads, finding, <laughs> finding me and her, me and her strange pirate lass, with, with a nickname like the bear. Oh, do we, um, have a, uh, a little flutter of which ship, um, Borin ends up on? <laughs> oh, well, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll learn all about his whereabouts today when uh, when he watches it back and yeah and, no uh, worries. and leaves comments <laughs> <laughs> i'm not uh, worried and i'm not drinking any portion <laughs> oh well you, you should know, give him know. an ultimatum you've either got to drink a potion or you've got to get married to uh to cheryl <laughs> the bear um well on um, the plus side she does have some of her own teeth so <laughs> You can't ask for better than that, really. Mm. And she likes a man with a beard. <laughs> um, anyway, she uh, she she marches off happily. Um, she kind mm. of walks. Uh, she walks like a nineteen eighties metler, like she's got a tree shoved up her ass sideways. Um, you know, heel heel was touching the floor first, and uh, and off she goes towards Aratide. Mm. Well, this. Oh, Captain, whoever he is, he sounds sounds bizarre that he's either got a um, a fake leg or an injured leg, but yet can summon such powerful arcane forces to set people on fire or ex cause explosions like that. I mean, yes, I can cause people to catch fire and cool, but. Yeah, that is through arcane means, um, whether it's uh, my my staff or my wand or the teachings that I have uh, been bestowed. Um, we we'll have to be careful if he if he's that large and powerful. He, he could be he could be the equal of me in the arcane and the equal to Pontos in in close quarters. Yeah, but it is Pontos's leg, I imagine. So I'm guessing Pontos might have additional um, rage. I think he wants his leg back. Yeah, and we've all seen Pontos in a, an ass kicking contest. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we have. Cool. Huh? Shall we head back to town, or? Well, um, we either go back into town straight away, or we could head. Um, south to try and earn a bit more uh, recognition from the people. If hopefully, if um, a few of them are happy with us, buy us a few drinks, we might get some more more information, or possibly a few more jobs or or such like. Yeah, and we've got this um, Mermidi person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, this um, Melusina. Melusina. Yep. Which may be a good bet. I'm sure there must be a bounty on her head. Uh, yes, yes. There, um, the mayor did put a bounty, a uh, um, hundred gold coins, if we can come back with uh, her head. So I'm, I'm sure that's something that we can deal with. I think um, Borin might be hard to find in town at the moment. He might be hiding f uh, fairly soon. Shall we go into town and go and see if we can find this Messolina? Yes, yes. Um, all reports seem to say yes, south of the island. Cool. Yeah. 
So you're heading back to Arrow Tide. <clears throat> mm -hmm. We will save the delights of Fairwick for another day. So you you walk back into Arrow Tide. Um, perhaps it is getting a bit later in the day now because you've probably um, walked a good few miles into and out of the interior of the island. Um, the the sun begins to gradually set. Um, there is a uh, a salmon pink sort of glow along the horizon, which leads you to believe that the following day will be a nice and sunny day. Um, people are doing what they do in uh, towns such as Arrow Tide. Um, sailors and pirates alike um, both enjoy the, the the delights of a good tavern, and um, so it is uh, quite a lively town in the evening. Um, you've already been to a couple of taverns in the area, but you can you can certainly find food and drink if you are looking for them. If you want to immediately go and look for Emilia then you may do that too. So, what's the plan? What are you doing first? Do you do you want to um, hurl some pigs? Was that Just what it was? Yeah, we can hurl some pigs. <laughs> Any any time that option is there for our captain, he is always down for a, a bit of pig tossing. Well, let's say that uh, it is Friday night in uh, in Arrow Tide, and in downtown Arrow Tide, the way the likely lads show their prowess to the uh, the maidens is by a bout of pig tossing. Um, pig tossing is a sport. A little bit like tossing the caber, as in you're picking up something that is not very easy to throw and trying to make it go as far as you can. Um, but even in our very first session of this campaign, when it started um, all the way back in January of, was it 2020 or 2021? I forget now. Uh, it came up in the chat. But one of the first things that happened in our campaign was... Pontos um, hurling a pig like a, like an Olympic hammer. Um, so, so perhaps um, we're about to find out where he learnt it from. <laughs> um, somewhere off to the side of uh, one of the uh, Arrow Tide taverns, um, I think this might be one you haven't been to because there were two in the port, weren't there? And you went to both of them. Yes. Uh, I think I am going to use the delights of the random name generator to give us a name of a bar. Uh, so. Dun, dun, da. So. And why does it make me accept the privacy policy every single time? Dun, dun, da. Tavern names. <laughs> okay. Oh, these are always so funny. The pig and net. Um. Well, well, there's one called the interesting queen, which I'm not going to pick. Um. But that one sounds about right. Um. So, uh, this is uh, a, a slightly unusual, slightly outre culture pub. Um called the the gorgeous oysters bar um that was randomly generated honestly um outside it instead of uh anyone who's ever spent any time in France will notice that in some communal areas you have these little sand pits which are for playing bull which is uh yeah. um sort of like sort of like bowls but you toss them up in the air instead of rolling them along the ground don't you oh no that's petonk isn't it Am I getting mixed up? Anyway. Oh, it's something like that, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, there are there is like a, uh, a, a, like a sand pit, which has got some kind of coarse sand raked across it. Um, and there are some tree trunks laying out a course. And there's a little pig pen in which there are some, um, some pigs... They don't vary too much in size. These are all 
um, young adult boars. Their tusks are not as big as, uh, for example, uh, Chewbacon's. Um, these are boars rather than giant boars. But the men of the town gather on a Friday and Saturday night and toss pigs. They do it for fun. Um, they do it for fun and profit. There are bets on the side. Um, some of the ladies watch. Some of the ladies join in. Um, but um, usually this is something that uh, the the young men do to prove their their physical and martial prowess by hurling a pig as far as they can. So the way we will work this out um, is by doing athletics checks. Um, what's the word? When you do an athlete, uh, opposed athletics checks. So you will do an athletics check against your opponent to see who can toss a pig further. Mm. <coughs> So, who is presenting themselves for pig tossing? I will obviously present myself. Okay. So, you arrive. There are um, some people snigger and say, <laughs> It's that boy who reckons his ship was eaten by a monster. <laughs> He's come back. <laughs> oh, he can't wait to see this. And some people are like, Oh, that's... That's Pontos, isn't it? I hear him and his friends did quite a good job defending the fishing ships. So perhaps um, there is a slight, uh, a slight flux to your party's public opinion. Which could change even more, uh, depending on how far you can hurl a pig. Uh, is anyone else in the party going to hurl a pig? Uh, I, 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 to try and make Pontos look better, I'll, uh, I'll attempt it. Though I'm going to crash and burn. Yeah, you see me. I, I, I sort of struggle just trying to pick this thing up. It's like it'll be like a ten year old trying to pick up a, a large puppy. Cool. So, okay. um, Char and Pontos stand stand by uh, stand side by side um in in the pit um a uh, a chap a chap who has the keys to the pig pen um goes and grabs a couple of boars um he and another lad haul the boars up to you uh you have a boar each um they are placed into your arms who wants to hurl a pig first and, and uh, what's uh, your methodology? The old spin around, grab the pig, or grab the boar by its little little hoofs <laughs> on my back. And I'm going to get kind of like a good uh, hammer throw. Cool. Okay. So uh, give us a uh, an athletics check, strength athletics. 22. Well, that is a, that is a good score. Um, char... Um, is holding his pig. Um, yeah, um, for me, it's going to be more. I've just got it kind of both arms round its chest and just trying to hold it. And I'll just like in one motion, just try and hurl uh. it as far as I can. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And athletics. Oh, fuck me. It's, it's not a bad attempt. You've got a better roll, but there's a bit... Uh, your technique was quite good. Um, um, you get you get a, a polite ripple of applause. Um, people are like, Oh, well done. Nice try. Well done, lad. Come back when you've spent a couple more years at sea. You need a bit more meat on those bones, don't you? But, yeah, nice try, lad. Um... But, I thought Pontos. But the, the first round is won by Pontos, who hurls a pig um, a good uh, a good 10 yards. Um, the pig kind of rolls in the dirt and, uh, and starts to gallop off. But there are a, a group of people around who kind of catch the pigs and bring them back. Ah, well done, Pontos. Ah, will you retire? 
or will you, uh, will you have a go against another likely lad? Oh, I'm going against another. Right. Well, what about you, you there? You seem, you seem a bit pale. Do you think you could lift a pig? Not as good as my uh, one-legged friend, but uh, I'll take him on. Why don't you come and give it a go? Come and stand here. At least you got both your legs. <laughs> Very true. Yes, I'm going to go up and I'm going to grab the pig by the opposite legs that Pontos used. Oh, there's a there's a, a chap kind of commentating. He says, ah, it's interesting. He's going for the reverse hog maneuver. Um, so give us uh, give us an athletics roll. Is this not a dexterity? <laughs> no, you, you you have to hurl it by main strength. Yeah, you you can't be any worse than what I was. So just I think out. I think I can. So I'm going to spin around using trying to use centrifugal forces and just let it go at the correct angle and hopefully away from the crowd. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> So what what does a fumble mean in this context? Uh, you spin around and around. Um, You're you, actually stronger than I am, Cowrook. Mm -hmm. um, you, you let go of the pig, and but you slightly mistime it, so it actually goes uh, backwards along the along along the sand pit rather than forwards. It crashes into the uh, uh, the log barrier, and then immediately charges you and knocks you off your feet um and then somebody catches the pig and then brings it back and it's like oh not to worry you're not a local you didn't grow up doing this oh well done didn't he do well he needs a little bit more iron in his diet i reckon yes i tell you what a couple of years at sea that'll sort you out that'll give you a tan sort out that pallid flesh of yours anyway right off you go lad before you hurt yourself no. I'm going to walk out with my head bowed in shame. <laughs> Gone bloody, can't believe Char chucked a pig bell on me. Bloody, bloody, <laughs> bloody hell. Um, P Pontos does a does a an, another another fairly decent throw. You know, it's uh, it's not going to win any prizes, but uh, but it beat Camera Rook. So <laughs> a challenger comes up. Um, this is a a young pirate lad. Um, he has. Um, yet to win any big sea battles, he uh, he has um, uh, he has the look of a, a, a the thirsty challenger. Um, what we need is a random pirate name. So, pirate name generators. I absolutely love this. I might even link this for those who haven't already seen it. But right then, this is. Um, Truebridge Gentleheart Langley, which was the first one on the list that I happened to read. Um, oh, come on then, Truebridge! This is uh, this is one of your first goals, isn't it, lad? Aye. And uh, he he picks up a pig, and he has. I'm going to give him a strength bonus of two. He's um, much stronger than a commoner. But probably a bit weaker than Pontos. He is going for um, the the half hog approach. That's where you hold one back leg and f one front leg, and then you spin around, and then you kind of try and launch from the shoulder um, rather than from the extended arms. He is going to give it a go. Thirteen, not too bad. He he threw a pig some distance. Let's. Uh, Let's have an athletics roll and uh, see how Captain Pontos does. Mm. Hang on, sorry. There we go. Oh, well done, Pontos! Uh, a few people, a few people applaud. Um, and uh, Trowbridge. Uh, Trowbridge Nangley um, walks away a little bit disconsolate. He's like, ah, ah, well, I think I'll go and have another eel. And um, another one comes up, maybe the last one, the last one prepared to stand up against Captain Pontos. 
Um, this is uh, Thurston Cutthroat Zane. This is a, uh, a scarred and wiry pirate who has obviously um, fought on many a pirate ship um, or, or, or fishing ship. Either way, there's uh, plenty of sea battles to be had here. And he says, Ah, I'll take you, Pontos, and you, you, you made-up sea monsters. I can toss a pig further than you. Um, would you care to put your money where your mouth is? Uh, yes. Right then, if I toss a pig further than you, then you give me ten gold pieces. Seems fair. Right. Are there any side bets on? Because I'm putting money on Pontos as well. Yeah, you can do that. So, um, I don't know. I, I can't calculate odds because I know nothing about gambling. So, I think we'll just say that you'll get even odds you'll double you'll get your uh you get your stake back and the same again if you if you win mm -hmm. um this guy is quite wily he's obviously quite good at the uh the technique of pig tossing um he he kind of uh tickles the hog's ribs and gives it a bit of a slap on the uh on the rump and goes ah it's a good pig this one will go bloody miles and he uh he gets ready to hurl it yeah. Well, if there's if there's someone now, I'm, I'm going to um, put ten ten gold on Pontos. Cool. Okay. So this guy he spins around, takes a couple of steps forward, and lets go of the pig at the line. It sails through the air. Oh, it's average. His technique was good, but the pig um, was wriggling and uh, and uh, fighting back. Go on, Pontos. Okay. <laughs> so, so Pontos <laughs> just, just, just to make fun of this guy, it seems. Um, what, what did you do? What, what was the, uh, what was the special technique this time? Uh, you know when you uh, throw roll a bowling ball normally, but you get the people that launch it down the, uh, down a good two or three, about three quarters down the alley without it bouncing. I'm just gonna have run and then thrown it with a little skip. Whilst looking at him dead in the eyes. But no look. He's like... <sighs> you whistled, summoned Chew Bacon and threw Chew Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> in full armour as well. <laughs> but Chew Bacon would kind of give a running charge, wouldn't he? <laughs> Almost fly over. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, yeah. This, I, was, I was thinking that exact thing yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> But ah, oh, this guy though he doesn't he doesn't look very happy. This is uh, this is Thurston Cutthroat Cutthroat Zane, and he he's got one eye that's milky white, and one uh with a scar going down it from the you know from the top of the cavity to the bottom, and the other eye is uh, kind of a piercing blue colour, and he kind of points it at you, and uh, pulls his pulls his little dagger out and uh, and starts picking his fingernails with it. He's like, uh, next time, Pontos, here's your gold. And he throws it at your feet in the dust and storms off. Oh, uh, 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 that's, 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 uh, don't go back um, in, in, in a foul mood. Hey, hey. And I, I just go, right, uh, next round is on me. And, and I just go to the bar and, and put, um, put 30 gold down uh, on the bar. There's a massive cheer. Um, uh, and uh, the barmen start um, pouring tankards of eel for all they're worth, and everyone seems to be in a very good mood. Um. I would say that if there were uh, some kind of party reputation system in uh, in effect, because uh, maybe there is, um, you have definitely gained some party reputation um, in both diplomacy and uh, and in um, expertise and uh, kind of crowd pleasing. So there we go. Very good. Um, your reputation in Arrow Tide grows. 
It's, it's always nice to uh, keep uh, people people happy. Uh, you've you've uh, proven your you've still got it, Pontos. Um, we had never had any doubts. I mean, the way you manhandle Chew Bacon on a daily basis, you 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 train almost every day for this. Do that. You want me to get your thirty gold back? A lot of pockets around here. Very drunk people. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, um, <laughs> to, to be honest, I was going to uh, hopefully uh, now they've got some looser lips, I might be able to have a listen around, see if we can pick up anything. It might be uh, more beneficial. Just a, a few gold like that. Who knows what we might be able to pick up on? Are you going to have a chat with the uh, <clears throat> with the people? Yeah. yeah. And um, but if anyone else wants to as well. Okay, uh, I I'll have a. It's not a performance roll. Uh, I, it's more persuasion than anything else, isn't it? Um, but you have definitely loosened the lips of the people, so perhaps a persuasion roll with advantage. Okay, so let's see what we got. Mm, not great. Give me a second. Things are just loading still. Da, da, da. Advantage. Persuasion, yeah? Uh, yeah. Not dexterity. Certainly not. You can't <laughs> you can't talk with your fingers. Okay, so oh. yeah. Not not great, perhaps. I mean they they're full of cheer, but you're still strangers, but you do hear um, you do hear a couple of rumours. Um, one thing you pick up on is there is a bit of ill will between Fairwick and Arrowtide. Um, you you know that the Arrowtide fishermen rely on the Fairwick lanterns to do their fishing, and that the uh, the boats rely on. Um, hiring uh, hiring escort ships to make sure that they're not attacked by pirates um, apparently Fairwick charge an exorbitant fee for their lanterns um, and they are um, a lot of sailors have to lease them rather than buying them and you get the feeling that you know a lot a lot of the wealth on this island is generated by the fishing trade and a lot of that wealth is basically skimmed by Fairwick. Um, and, yeah, it, there's there's a bit of bad blood. Mm. Um, wh but, yeah, that's that's sort of a bit of background buzz. Um, you also hear about uh, a number of missing sailors um, who uh, were trying to fish near the near the black sands to the south uh in the south south kind of peninsula not a peninsula is it uh the southern tip of the island uh, have what? have no fear about that uh our our good captain here the pig tosser himself he he is he's he's gonna deal with that in in the morning i i, I heard him boast about that earlier Um, what else? What other interesting rumours could you get in an island like this? Um, we didn't necessarily roll great, so no. I think I think that might be it for now. Ratiho. No worries, no worries. It did. It, it happens now and then. Hmm. But um. Okay, so um, I think uh, yeah, that, 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 that definitely seems to be in, uh, something that's bubbling on a lot of people's minds. Uh, that's that issue down in the south. Yeah. Let us see what we can deal with that in the morning. But uh, yeah, hopefully. Um, Boren hasn't been press ganged by then. Well, we, we might see his hairy little beard turn up. We can only hope. Um, 
Yeah. Um, what's that? Oh, that's a link. That's good. Okay. I have the link. Okay. Well, um, unless there's anything else, shall we say the um, following morning we'll start heading south? Cool. Yeah. Seems like a plan. Mm -hmm. So, do you sleep in your ship? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the harbour master um, says uh, you notice that the ship is uh, the ship is gone. Uh, the pirate, ga uh, the orc galleon. Um, the the harbour master, or at least one of the harbour master's lads, um, hands you a a, a a bag of gold coins, not an enormous one. Um, you might have expected a bit more, but you, you there's a few gold teeth in there. There's a few gold and silver earrings in there. Um, there's uh, a few, you know, random bits of jewellery, you know, cameos and uh, uh, cameos and gems and that sort of thing. Um, the teeth are a little bit bloodstained, as if they've literally been freshly locked, knocked out of mouths. But um, the there has been a a uh, some money left for you in exchange for the boat. The harbour master has already extracted his fee for a single day's uh, berth, which was um, I don't know, just a, a few silver pieces. Um, how much do you get? Hold on, I think this might be a random one. Um, you didn't really haggle on price very much, so I'm going to tell you. Uh, I'm going to give you five d20s worth of. No, maybe a bit more than that. Ten d20s worth of gold pieces. Oh, there we go. Okay, slightly above average. Um, so yeah, you you are left with about 111 gold pieces worth of assorted pilfered valuables um, in exchange for the, for the boat. The boat was not in especially good condition. Uh, it had not been particularly well maintained by the orcs. So actually, um, considering that the uh, the harbour master was talking about using it for firewood, um, 100 gold pieces for a free boat is not too not too bad. A little bit fire stained. Um, well, I hope she has fun with her new new lease in Paris in the sailing life. Yeah, the, uh, what the heart I heard. Sorry, character is what I heard. Hmm. Both three character. <laughs> but the the harbour master's boy um, is is slightly wide eyed. And he says, "Oh, you should have seen the woman who came to claim it." Uh, she was like a force of nature, and uh, she was dragging some some uh, short bloke by his beard. Um, it's a wonder she didn't throw him over her shoulder. Um, but yes, um, we we will let time tell whether that is in fact um, anyone you recognise. Um, but yes, uh, you enjoy a repast in your ship. You go to sleep in your hammocks and you wake up the next morning uh, feeling fresh. Um, Pontos has a bit of doms from his Herculean pig tossing effort, but nothing to affect him mechanically. Um, I would say that possibly uh, Char and Kararuk are also a little bit sore of shoulder. Um, and chest from their pig hurling, probably more than Pontos is. He's used to such Herculean uh, feats. Um, but yes. Okay, well, I don't know how, how he does that for fun. I don't know that. That's. Uh, he's a strange person, but uh, each their own. Right, let's see what we can find. Towards the south, then. So, do you go by boat or do you go on foot? Ooh. Captain Pontos, how easy is it to get down here by boat? What's quickest? How do you want to do it? 
Probably by foot. If we, if, we, if we can't get the boat up to the shore, I'm not. I'm not wading through that water to get um back on the land. You can get on Boren's shoulders; he'll carry you through. I'm not sure if he's there. He, he, he might suddenly appear with a thousand yard stare or something. <laughs> you weren't there, man. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, shipped in more ways than one. <laughs> Okay, well, let, let's uh, head towards the southern tip and Just hopefully, tip. We, hopefully we won't be uh, the next victims. Okay, you begin to head south. You come across a patch of sand which uh, is dark and glittering. These are perhaps the black sands referenced in, in local rumours. This would be a bit like the beach... Um, of a town with a heavy coal industry um, but you detect that this rather than being coal dust is probably um, some kind of uh, obsidian not sure where from but this is in fact volcanic glass yeah, I've seen this uh, from when I was at home from some of the lava, lava channels hmm if you want, anything. if you want, you can take some. Yeah. Uh, if you if you want to take some of the volcanic glass, though, um, let's see. S a wisdom check. Um. Uh, anyone who wants to take some volcanic glass. Check or save. I don't know. Depends how. Depends how eager you are. <laughs> no, just I wasn't sure which one to click on. That was all. Uh, I would go with the check. Uh, I tell you what, um, Char is in fact from the plane of fire. So do that again. Um, we'll see you had advantage. Oh, okay. I roll yeah. average. Average. Okay. Well. Um. Yeah, you, you you don't need much more than an average roll to realise um, that if you're going to collect um, ground glass, you probably don't do it with your bare hands. Ah, okay. Well, um, I can use my uh, mage hand to scoop it up to at least pour it into a, a, a spare vial just to uh, have some for a collection. Cool. So you have some ground obsidian. Um, which I'm sure will come in use for something. Uh, it's it's one of those things. Um, Carol, do you want me to uh, help as well for you? Or can you do something similar? I can do exactly the same. I get my mage hand and start scooping it up. Now, where are we going to keep it? Shall we put it into your uh, little house? Oh, this is this is um, that vial is uh, is yours. I, I will keep mine as a as a memento uh, on my person. Yeah, you could you could put it in a little bottle or jar or or, or something or a wooden box if you want. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that you have a suitable vessel. Okay, I'll, I'll skip up. How much are you taking? Yeah. Are, you, are you taking like a, a test tube full or a or a fistful in a little box? How much do you want? Well, I don't know how how much is obsidian worth. Um, I would say it its inherent value in this state is probably not enormous. I would describe this as a raw material. You I'll might be a... able to do something with it. Okay, I'll just take a like a box full, like a little box. Uh, Bigger um, than a vial. I I um I have known people in the past who have lost lost uh, eyesight from one eye from this type of material getting into their eyes. It can be quite an irritant, um, and some of them are, it's gone so far that they've they've lost an eye. So. Be careful. 
Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I'll be careful and I'll get a little box, not, you know, like a bigger than a vial, like a glass type thing, and I'll put it in there. Cool. What, like? Umbler type thing. Size. Open window, close window, big fish, little fish, obsidian box. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, and then you travel a few more miles down the beach with your uh, boxes of uh, ground obsidian. Um, which is, of course, a volcanic glass. You arrive. It is still the daytime. I am going to take you to a new map in a minute. So this is an experiment because this map is two maps, one which is a day map and the other which is a night map. And the idea is that I can flip them over depending on whether it's day or night when you arrive. But I'm going to say it's daytime. So I'm going to turn on daylight mode. There we go. Why are you not turning on? Come on, daylight mode. There we go. Then I'm going to make sure that I didn't make a mess of the dynamic lighting. And then I'm going to put you guys on the map and then I'm going to move the thingy. The ribbon. So, no boring. We have char. We have no deep. We have kararook who is probably wearing the old world equivalent of um of um glacier shades or whatever they're called, you know those ones with the little bits around the sides. It's not glacier shades, is it? What do they call them? Mm. I know what you mean. Well, you're wearing aviators. No, oh, aviators are, are, are the mirrored ones, aren't they? But yeah. There's ones you they can, there's shades you can get which have a little side part. Yeah. And I seem to think that they are for um, skiing and that sort of thing. Pontos does not seem to have full hit points. Did you apply your um, hit points from the short rest, Ryan? I did, but I didn't roll enough to. Well, well you've had a you've had a you've had a full rest now since um, was after oh, yeah, the yeah. pentos. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You've had a long rest now, so. Oh okay. Uh, push your long rest button and. Uh, and oh, what's that there? It's like a, a a black and terrifying tentacle. Hey, kitty. Uh, uh, Richard. And wherever he's been, he's absolutely covered in mud on his paws. Lovely. Oh dear. Ah. Thank you. Out oh, hunting. Yes, but um, yeah, he's he's got muddy paws, so he uh, jumps up for a cuddle. The little get. I've noticed that if you hit the long rest button, it doesn't always update your token on the map. But if you pull a new one out again, it does. So I just pulled out a second Pontos and then deleted him. Um, you find yourselves in a secluded cove. With a gentle sea breeze blowing it, um, blowing towards you, it is quite peaceful and pleasant. You can see a few footprints on the beach, and you can see what looks like a little cave slightly to the north. Can you give me a perception roll? All right. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Very good. Ah, not too bad, dear. Okay. Oh, why am I so far up the, the chat? Okay, Kararook um, seems to look in just the right direction. Perhaps he has a... Um, a feeling of uh, a feeling of being watched and you notice sitting on a rock 
enjoying the midday sunshine is a creature. I'm going to blow her up. Hmm. She looks like she has very long bluish hair. She has a long, almost serpentine scaled tail, um, which seems to end, you, s you notice, lapping in the waves in a fish's tail. So she kind of looks a bit like a, a snaky mermaid, and she has little, little wings kind of on her hips. Her upper body, she looks like a beautiful woman with slightly pale flesh. And she has um, some sort of crown or tiara on her head. She looks over at you quite mildly. Um, she doesn't say anything. But you see her and she sees you. Turn to Char and say, Char, do you want to try and persuade her, talk to her, ask her not to attack sailors before we kill her? Hmm. Okay, well, can the Perry, you just cover me as I just approach a little bit. So I'm just going to move up a little bit closer. Um, and so what's that? That's still 40 feet. So I'm going to use... Um, Thermoturgy just to increase the volume of my voice, so not so I'm screaming, but so over the sound of the waves in the distance, um, they can hopefully hear me nice and clearly. Okay. And um, so, yeah. so you, you're standing um, almost knee deep in the uh, in the sea. Mm -hmm. uh, a, little, a little bit of cool sea spray splashes on you, which you probably hate. <laughs> Yeah, this, I'm I'm wincing at this, but I'm I'm trying to show a little bit of willing here. This is not the nicest sensation. Um, greetings, uh, I have come to hear some some of the uh, sailors from the nearby town have gone missing in the, these parts. Do you know anything about this? You don't like the water much, do you, Red Man? No, I do not. This is not what I'm used to, and I find it very disconcerting. Hmm. What are your friends doing? They're just just relaxing. Um, they they have they've travelled with me. They are just enjoying the chance to to rest. That's good. You should too. But uh, do you know anything of the others that have gone missing? Sometimes people come to visit me. Do they leave after? Oh, yes. Whereabouts do they go? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Where does anybody go? Oh, they should be returning back to the town, and that, that's why we have been asked to investigate. Hmm. It's a lovely sunny day. Why don't you have a sit down on the rocks? I'm going to move away from the, uh, go back to the select. I'm going to just move away from the water now and park myself there and just use precipitation just to dry off my feet. Okay. I'll tell you what. We will resume this uh, encounter. Mm-hmm next time because we've almost out of time and i don't want to get too much into it uh, yeah, only that's, a couple that's of minutes fine. um i'm not sure whether we'll be able to award very many awards but um let's see if we can knock them out anyway um 
anything that we cannot award we will just move past um, anything we can award we will go with so first kill not applicable no kills kill of the week not applicable yoink not applicable kill from the grave not applicable damage dealer not applicable best supporting role um, I th I'm gonna go I'm gonna say Pontos with his pig hurling yeah go with it okay or we could take it from a slightly different tack and say the best supporting role is is either Char or Pontos for helping support Pontos in his pig hurling which way would you rather go um Okay. Um, if 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 you, if you say uh, uh, me or me or Carrick for supporting, and then role player for it can be Pontos for his uh, his pig pig tossing. Cool. Okay. So well, I I guess uh, joint best supporting role for Char and Carrick because they made Pontos look good. Not that it's you know. Um, Carrick made him look really good. <laughs> Carrick made him look really good. Okay. Yeah. At least I can throw it the right direction. Okay, I struggled to pick the pig up. <laughs> Couldn't do much. I could. Uh, fumble of the week. Well, that obviously goes to uh, Rook for hurling the pig in the wrong direction. Um, roll player of the week. Um, yeah, I think. Um, let's give that to Pontos for his uh, his efforts at pig hurling. Mm -hmm. um, whose side are you on? We didn't have any friendly fire. Not um, this time, no. We did have someone throw a pig the wrong way, but I don't think that counts under the strict definition. Pin we cushion. Trying to get uh, Boren married off. Who side are you on? Okay. Who ship are you on? Who ship are you on? Um, who ship are you on? Excellent. Um, well... <laughs> I think it was Char that was trying to encourage um, Cheryl the Bear to uh, to go and uh, go and marry. Um, uh, after Ka after Carrick could uh, first broach the subject. Mm. Yeah, I planted the idea, but you ran with it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'll have to Char. Char to have that. Yeah. Uh, the Pincushion Award does not go to anybody because nobody took any damage this week. Um, and that's it. So a very very short award ceremony. Um, which neatly takes us up to the end of time. Uh, not the end of time, but, you know, the end of this session anyway. Um, if, you, if you've enjoyed this session, if you've watched it uh, on YouTube, uh, please like, subscribe, share. Uh, I am going to put uh, Ryan's uh, channel in the, in the comment. Uh, in the comments. Is it the comments? The description. description. So uh, please, please look him up. He's uh, he's a young, cool dude who plays all the all the cool video games. Uh, in contrast, um, I am also going to set up an old man's uh, video game channel playing like SNES and NES games, I think, and that's going to be called Gen X Gamer for uh, us old bastards. Um, so um, yeah, more exciting things to come. Please follow some links. Please share some love. Have a lovely week. And uh, see you next time. Cheers, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.